Hi guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Tennis at Best with myself, Bando K, that guy, first time, Mr Zane, hello, <laughs> and back up there, the D. Uh, please, glad you all could join us tonight, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to get through, we have some games news, randomly, we've got some chat with VR, we're going to probably fall out with some people over legal wranglings, uh, we've got some movie news, and that's pretty much the size of it. How are you doing tonight, Zane? Ah, doing not too bad, getting there. Problem the with uh, I need a new toe if anybody's got one lying around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, problem of the week after E3. See, we had this great idea. Let's been talking a while. We'll kick off a podcast. And you go, fantastic. We'll date the week before E3. There's lots of leaks. There's lots of rumours. There's plenty to talk about. And then you get E3. And there's hundreds to talk about. Four yep. fucking That's hours. That's a three and a half hour podcast. <laughs> as it turns out to talk about. This one will not be going on as long. I'll say that right now. My God. Nope. Is this last week's podcast part two? Yeah, I mean it's it's like by the end of, the end of last week, D was yawning so hard I was getting excited. <laughs> I don't really know what that means, but it sounded funny in my head. Um, <laughs> Arousing. But yeah, you get to this week and it's just there's nothing because of course E three goes on all week. We just see the presentations Sunday and Monday, but it's still been going on. So you've just been getting more details about the same things that you saw on Sunday and Monday. So this week, you're just like, so uh, we've got to talk about it, guys. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I was looking on, I was sitting on, like, I usually come home from work and stick YouTube on and look at my usual news sources um, and kind of whatever else I'm kind of farting about on the internet to look at. And uh, I jumped on and I went, no one's reported anything. Is the, is the internet stopped? And it's just because everybody's just come back from jet lag central and they're all just kind of like catching their breath after a solid week of work. So. Oh, that's exactly. Well, they're all still out there, or we're all still out there until the end mm. of the week. So, yeah, news a bit slim this week. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm all right with that because after last week I could do a lie down and a shiatsu and a rub down. Yeah. So, <laughs> hopefully not going to be four hours tonight, folks. That's all I'm saying. Be happy. Oh. <laughs> so on this Yay! note, <laughs> before we before we fire off too far as well, uh, just to let folks know that you can get us on Twitter hashtag at ten at best. I'll do that again. That's at ten at best. Uh, Facebook.com dot slash tab podcast, and you can get us at hello at ten years at best dot com. So we've got our domain now, which is lovely. Um, and also you can also find our podcast on your iTunes feed or wherever you find your podcasts so load your podcast mobile app up type in 10 years at best and you get the first two episodes on there which will probably take up half your phone memory um, but, so after that but you can subscribe from there as well so that all that stuff's available right now and uh, new websites coming up next week so you will actually listen on the actual web page as well as catching up on YouTube so we need to be really careful guys that we don't do too much in the way of uh, kind of visual gags because it's going to screw the audio side of things but you know it should be all right oh, come on my feed's all about the visual gags <laughs> <laughs> that it is my good friend that it is the d is a visual gag <laughs> see that would have been a better nickname the d is a gag <laughs> there's a different <laughs> joke in there isn't there yep <laughs> <laughs> Not anyway, going there. Moving, moving swiftly <laughs> on, shall we? Um, news points for the week. Who wants to start with? Do you want to start with something that's going to make everybody very antsy and annoyed and angry, or do you want to start with something light and fun? And oh, I wonder what. Since when have we done light and fun? Who are you kidding? I don't know. I'm just trying to kind of spread <laughs> the, the, the love a little bit. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Take your pick. Go for it. All right. Do you want angry one or angry two? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more like it. I feel like we've not had really a, an actual choice in this matter now. That is true. We've been pigeonholed. Why, I are. <laughs> All right, so let's start with a wee bit of news then. Uh, it seems to be a big week for lawsuits. Apparently. How so? No. Uh, Zane, do you want to fire this one off? So, Saturday, this is probably about the one bit of news that I did find. So, on my Twitter feed on Saturday morning, Sean Murray appears for creator of No Man's Sky. Hello Games, isn't it? Yeah, saying... And I quote, Yeah, we finally settled with Sky. They own the word Sky, in brackets. We can call our game No Man's Sky. Three years of secret, stupid, legal nonsense over. So in other words, possibly, I mean, they're not saying this is what caused that last delay. Uh, well, the game was supposed to come out in, was it ended 
was that about now? Yeah. Or was it July? I think it was now. I think it was now. Yeah, and get delayed till, till August. And I also remember probably about a year, less than a year ago, maybe about eight months ago, an interview with Sean where he also kind of, uh, kind of says, I really hoped I would be able to announce a, a release date back then and says, but you know, unfortunately I didn't just kind of played it off. Unfortunately I can't and didn't really say why. And I presume this is what's causing the whole thing is the fact that he's having to go to court or now doesn't because they seem to have settled out of court over the use of the word Sky because Sky TV are going, no, we own that word. We're using it. It's brutal. You, you can't have it. Do is Sky a known brand globally or I do not I don't think so actually. Well I guess I guess for I think folks they, abroad, it's I kind think of like they are, actually. Are they? I think so. I mean it's it is British Sky broadcasting, but I'm sure they'll it's one of those things where they'll have a lot of fingers and lots of pies, lots of sky pies. Yeah, I think just for kind of sanity's sakes, for folk that are, are in other countries, it's kind of like for the state side, I guess, like Comcast or AT and T. Um, the idea being that it's just like a big conglomerate that deals with. And in, in our country, it's always um, TV broadcasting and broadband uh, and phones, so it's kind of telco, um, about about the size, I guess, by ratio of like Comcast and that kind of thing. And they're not they're not a hated company over here. I wouldn't say. Generally, mm -hmm. no one kind of goes, oh, Sky are terrible. That, they're not really that. Um, but I think in this case, they're building themselves with some kind of enemies. It's one of those ones I understand you need to, in order to have a trademark, you need to aggressively guard that trademark. Otherwise, you'll lose it. Otherwise, yeah. things become generic and you just lose the trademark, even though you've actually got it. Um, yeah. trademarked so I can understand that but the, I mean the whole point of these things is it's supposed to be safeguarding like for like the idea yeah. of a trademark is that you don't start up another television company and or something similar uh, say you start a, a video on demand company mm -hmm. and call it Sky something or other Sky videos yeah. and folk automatically think it's therefore linked to Sky TV um, and they're using your brand to give themselves a boost mm. that's fine but this game is beautiful but no one's looking at it and thinking that's a bloody television <laughs> that's not happening <laughs> and even if it was like you say the word sky to me I go like that yeah. it, does, it doesn't need to occur to me to go oh sky oh I wonder what's on the fucking television tonight mm. it's like they're so unrelated yeah it's like I mean, the whole thing is just silly. It's like use the trademarks for what they're intended for. This is yeah. just stupid strong arming. Well, yeah, because that was, I mean, the, what you're saying there is in line with um, the, the Apple brand, I suppose, where Apple was allowed to trade on that name as long as they didn't do anything kind of uh, music orientated. And then when they kicked off their, their whole iTunes and stuff, that's when the, the kind of lawyers for the Beatles kind of piped in saying, whoa, whoa, whoa remember that Wait, thing? Uh, you're not supposed to be doing that. And obviously they've Shut financially up. settled somehow. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It makes sense. It's like completely tangential but relevant. Living here in Scotland, the name McDonald, fairly common, you know, there's a few of them about. And the amount of small businesses that have had to change their names or just go to court and lose and just disappear completely because of McDonald's mm. is absolutely ridiculous here. And it's again, it's not just like small food companies; it's all sorts that have been yeah. hit, you know, that have been hit by this kind of thing. And it's like, again, I just go, if you don't want your hamburgers to be confused with a sideboard, don't make it taste like a fucking sideboard. <laughs> End the problem, and then they can still have their small business named after their fucking family name. <laughs> Where's this? <laughs> You better not be dissing the double cheeseburger, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is more like a fucking headboard. <laughs> I have a gallery. Oh, jeez. The whole thing is just absolutely silly. So. It is a bit wacky. I think that's the thing is, there's a lot of this kind of thing with these court cases. But I mean, we were, I was looking at it the other day. There was, who was the other company that was involved with this? Kind of, I was talking to you earlier on, trying to figure out who it was. But, um, there's all kinds of kind of legal wranglings that happen with games, and I get that. But as you say, as long as it's protecting 
the interest of the object in which it's in. If you know, you get these kind of knockoff kind of things. Like for example, a good example is today. Um, a friend of mine went to rent a film online. Uh, it was Independence Day. Uh, he's like, "Which I'm going to rent Independence Day? I've not seen that in ages. I'm going to put that on." He goes to put it on, and it's a film called Independence Day, <laughs> and it's about something completely unrelated. And just because it wasn't a thumbnail on the service he was using on his phone, it's like, "What the hell is this crap?" So that association thing is dangerous. And in that mm-hmm. case, yeah, sue them because it's it's a, it's a film. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, it's just it's just that kind of thing really annoys me. Especially annoys me you get kind of. Uh, kind of countries or nations where there's no copyright laws and there's like blatant thievery left, right, and centre. That really upsets me. Not for the big companies so much, but for the little guy trying, you know. Ah, it's, it's just silly. But, uh, well, I mean, at least now they've got it sorted out. God knows how much it costs them. Yeah. And being the size, of, being that they're only a, a small independent company, then you've really got to hope that it hasn't cost them enough that this game now comes out at a loss no matter what they do. Yeah, you know, the, the Sky aren't actually just getting the profits of it, and that's the end of Halo games because of this. Like, because that would just be a travesty. A bloody tragedy, yeah. Like, um, but you know, time will tell. I guess we'll just need to see how it actually plays out. But yeah, fuck Sky. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even raining. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the cool thing is, is that. I think they're through the worst of it, so you're going to get to see a really cool game. And I, protect, I for one, won't be playing it because I don't have a... Well, it's on PC as well, isn't it? It's coming out on PC, same day. I'll play it on a PC then. But um, I look forward to watching you playing it on the PS4. <laughs> Is it um, cross-platform? Uh, I do not know, actually. Not that it kind of matters. Like, apparently Is it no multiplayer in it? Well, you're all in the one universe. But, but it is, it is a universe. You're all in the same instance, but you're all starting off on your own planet, and it is a planet-sized planet. Like Shit. you, uh, apparently you're not going to be finding each other's impossible. Then yeah, apparently you're not going to be seeing other people in this game. If you do, it's going to be a really remote chance. Um, although apparently you can kill someone if you do find them, so that would be a that would be hysterical actually. <laughs> play the game for three years finally bump into one living person and they just pull out a pistol and blow you away <laughs> no! because because hey answered that well exactly <laughs> yes. so what you're telling me is this is a game that looks a bit like elite is about space you can land on planets and i might not need to guarantee as a, as a high chance actually i won't meet other humans yeah pretty much i'm in Same <laughs> up. Day one. <laughs> um yeah, no, I quite, I quite look forward to it, but it's definitely one I'd watch on your stream. I think it's probably because of the size of it, you're likely to stream that one rather than episode it, aren't you? I think you're going to have to, just the sheer size of that game. Mm. Actually, edit, I think that's the thing, it's probably actually going to be quite slow, so editing that down into something interesting would just take too long. Yeah. I think you just stream the entire thing. But It'd be perfect to be a stream of consciousness where you just fly about in a spaceship, I look forward <laughs> to it. <laughs> but certainly, you, have, you, have you heard of it? Have you seen anything about it? So what is this again, sorry? No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. No, I've not even heard of the title. You haven't? Wow. No. Nope. It's, uh, it's kind of, we, you've seen kind of like the Elite Dangerous and things like that. Yeah. It's kind of in that vein, but it looks a little bit more stylized, almost animated in a respect. Um, and it's like real world, kind of uh, generated procedural worlds and um, you can actually land on planets and it's just, as, I suppose Zane could probably explain it better. <laughs> ah, you're doing fine. <laughs> Thanks, <you. laughs> but yeah, not looks pretty awesome. Uh, but unfortunately for us Xbox guys, it's only coming to PS4 and PC. So I'll get a shot of it on a PC, but it won't be one for us to play together. Yeah, the graphics look kind of interesting enough. I'm just kind of uh, looking at the the little kind of gaming stills. Um, it seems to be borrowing a lot of its graphics from uh, Battlestar Galactica for a lot of the the kind of the ships the designs. Um, yeah, certainly for the kind of ship. It was, but well, it's basically a cross between a Viper from Battlestar Galactica and an X-Wing from Star Wars, but mm. which is no bad thing, apart from any legal wranglings. <laughs> I think they've had enough of that so far. Exactly. Um, so I guess on from that on to the other legal, did you see about this Twitch bot lawsuit thing that's going on, Zane? Uh, do you know what? No, I didn't. I only really kind of caught up with this when you kind of threw it in the show notes tonight. So mm. I am a little behind on this one. Um... So it's, they're going after, what is it, seven, seven different companies at the moment? That generate fake watchers, basically. Yeah. 
I think it's an interesting one because it's on one hand, I mean, if, if individuals are paying for it, then yeah, they deserve to be hit for it. But I think the only way to deal with those companies is to hit the people who are paying them, not the companies themselves, because those companies will cease to exist if people aren't getting any of their services. Um, and the, I guess I, I'm not familiar with this. this, is more your kind of territory, but I, as far as I'm aware, I mean, as Twitch as lucrative as YouTube can be if you've got hundreds of thousands of viewers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I yeah. mean, the, the, there are plenty of streamers that just do that exclusively and do that as a living. Um, absolutely. Just as lucrative, if not, kind of, you know, it's, it's in the same ballpark, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's not something I've kind of looked at so far, maybe one day, like a... Just purely because I prefer the, the YouTube ego, 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 ego system. Yes, there you go. Ego so system potential, up until this point. Um, is there not potential to do with this kind of thing to happen into the YouTube as well, though? Or to be already happening on YouTube? Quite possibly. I don't know, to be honest. If it, I mean, if it is, it's not as big a problem as it is on Twitch. Mm. Um, whether that means it doesn't exist, I couldn't actually tell you. I've certainly never come across... Yeah. Um, I've never come across any YouTubers with stupidly you know, high amount, high high amounts of views or random comments. Apart from yeah. the, the random nonsense you get on YouTube, anyway. Um, but I, I mean, it's it'll be interesting to see how exactly you do tackle it because I mean, it's pretty much as you say. You, I can understand how you can go after the people that they know are using it because you're yeah. just you're flat out breaking terms and conditions. You can deal with them. Mm -hmm. Except you can't because there's so many of them in numbers <laughs> that's trying Aye. to squash them all down is obviously problematic. Um, where they actually stand from a legal soft, uh, a legal point to try and do something about companies that are just creating software at the end of the day, um, yeah. I don't know how you even do that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how far you're going to get with that. I think it's good that they try, even if it is just to make the point. I think absolutely, absolutely, it's something they do. But um, yeah, I, I, I've never really understood the whole thing with the using the bots in the first place. Um, well, you just mean from a kind of personal pride point? Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of it. I think Twitch. The other thing that Twitch need to look at is when you go into Twitch. And you look up any certain game, it'll bring up a whole list of people that are streaming. And the people at the top of the list are the ones with the most views, and the people at the bottom of the list are the ones with the least views. And it kind of reinforces this idea that it makes sense for them, I guess, that the most people with the most views are therefore the most popular streamers, are therefore yeah. the, the best. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy kind of thing. Streamers, so that's what people are going to watch. And therefore, if more people are watching them, they get more ad revenue. Twitch makes more money. Everybody's happy, and it keeps on going. But uh, it kind of fosters this idea that therefore, in order to be good, you need a lot of streamers, you need a lot yeah. of viewers, and you need a lot of subscribers and a lot of views. And it's well, no, because if you're using bots to inflate your score. And then people come in because you've got a high score. They just come in and say you're shite and your yeah. channel just gets filled up with folks saying you're shite and it's not going to last. So I, I, I don't understand why people actually use them in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right, so would you rather have a channel and only two people are watching it and think you're ace or would you rather have one and a half million people saying you're shite? That one and a half million people is not going to stick around to say you're shite. And what if, if they did? And if you want to make, if you want to do it as a living, you do idea of being hated. Yeah, it's not going to be sustainable. Two people's not going to be sustainable either. But two people will eventually turn into four. Will t eventually turn into. No, 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 no. Them's the rules. You're either got two people for life who love you and your beard, or you've got one point five million people who hate you and just give you abuse every week. Well, I mean, I'm an ego medical fucktard, so of course I'm going to take two people that tell me I'm awesome. That's, yeah. that's why I've got you two folk on screen right now. I mean... <laughs> I love your beard! <laughs> <laughs> There's actually uh, Zarak in the uh, YouTube the channel just uh, says he doesn't have viewers to worry about this. That's the same problem as I get, so... <laughs> yeah, don't worry, dude. I'd rather fail. <laughs> and I just say, what's a YouTube channel? <laughs> We've got one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
um, yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting thing though, that kind of like fixing things because I think that's it seems to be that there's this kind of I mean, I get the understanding of that because it's financially motivated. The more viewers you've got, the more ad revenue you get, and p- potentially you've got to be a kind of you know, like someone who can sell ad space. I get all that stuff. What gets me with this is that that's to understand. What I don't understand is you've got like you see these kids like playing at like um. Was was it the the game they're cheating last year? Was it Overwatch? Mm-hmm. Um, people getting banned from getting uh, cheating, and I'm kind of going. Can you explain to me? Do, is there any way they can make money by cheating like that? Or is it just trolling? No, no that's just dicks being dicks. That that See, that's purely. I don't get that. Dicks. I mean, unless and, you're selling like character perks or something. Mm-hmm. And that's people paying forty bucks to be a dick to be banned to therefore have to go out and. If they want to do it again, pay another forty bucks. That's that part yeah, I really don't understand. But yeah, no, that's just people. That's just assholes being assholes. You know that way you always hope there's something more to it that you just don't understand to give you some mm. reason that humans aren't just assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, miserable. Unfortunately, not breaking news. Humans. If people can cheat, they're always going to cheat. Oh, well, that's exactly it, and I mean that's why that's for the most part why I only play multiplayer games in co-op because I can't... have you ever played Monopoly? <laughs> I've played Monopoly three times in my life. Um, oh, some cheating bastard! That's I think that's the thing is like there's there's a laugh and a joke behind it, but that's why I don't play multiplayer games other than co-op really because it's not that yeah okay I am shit and can't compete I get that and that's probably just coming with my age group and my responsibilities but the uh... <laughs> not your abilities just your responsibilities yeah that's, <laughs> well, it's the fact that I don't have the time to put the eight hours into grind in the game but the thing is is that I kind of I don't feel like going on like see see I take an hour tonight to play after we finish this I don't want to jump onto the division go into the dark zone and have like some 12 year old lay shit into me for like an hour I'm just sitting going I've been so demoralised I don't want to play this ever again and it's, it is me it can't compete but I think when there's cheating going on it's unfair the guys who are skilled and can't even get an, an, an odd in edgeways because somebody's basically spamming them it's just a bit of shit sportsmanship's in the bin cheating's for mugs church and those who don't have abilities. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's a good point, actually. I wonder I wonder how many of these people are actually good at the game or are just a bunch of uh, script kiddies, you know? But that's my complaint anyway. I need to kind of vent once in a while because, frankly, I'm fucking terrible at games. Like awesome. I like guess Zane's just kind of going, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the same, but yeah. Absolutely yeah. suck, aren't I? I <laughs> still get a go. I still enjoy it. But yeah, no, I suck. And I'm awesome that's... when everybody else is killed. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. D here rescuing yeah. us on a daily basis. <laughs> Ever want a free kill in any game? Just look for this name. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Actually, I'm not going to get put in my actual handle. <laughs> no, but do, actually, people might scrape me off the floor and a bit, a bit to restore some humanity. You know, probably not though. Um, moving swiftly on, um, and I guess they in the land of multiplayer game. Did you see somebody's DDoS and um, battle on it? Apparently, Lizard Squad have been at it again, uh, basically launching deny our service, distributed deny our service attacks on Battle.net, which is, I believe, Overwatch runs on, or all those games run on, I guess. Yeah, so, I mean, that's basically Overwatch, World of Warcraft, StarCraft 2, uh, Diablo 3, all of them. Which is interesting in itself because all these companies, Bethesda are just starting to start up their own thing, or Bethesda.net, where you just launch this one application, this one launcher, and then you can access all their games from there, and it's just like one login for the whole thing, and you go, yeah, here's a downside to that. <laughs> Lizard in squad. Order, in order to affect every single game that you've got, you only need to DDoS one site. Mm-hmm. Um, as for the question, what do you think about what some 15-year-old's getting up to in his bedroom? <laughs> I, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it turns out it turns out to be a wanker. Do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's kind of par for the course. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that that's just the case. Only, th- only thing that annoys me about this particular story is any time it's reported and they talk about, yeah, they've been hacked. This hacker did the the DDoS, and they're not a hacker. And Yes. Please, please, please stop over and flighting their egos by calling these wee cunts hackers. Yes. <laughs> just, just. So well, that's exactly it. Oh, hack yeah. this, hack that. You're like, nope, 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 yeah. nope. Yeah, it's like when you're reporting the problem, 
you are increasing the problem yes by calling them hackers because they quite like that title that's what they want to be known as they think they're some wee, wee hacker he fucking DDoS give me a break that's the only thing that annoys me about the whole thing as for yeah it went down for a while people got upset well the, yeah it's, like, uh, it's just a game <laughs> <laughs> I play another game until they go away. And again, you can go and rant on all the websites you like about them and call them other names. Do you know what? That's what they want. Don't fucking, yeah. don't waste your time, mate. Don't bother. Yeah. Which is a bit ironic because we're sitting talking about it right now, but <laughs> it's worth it to talk about just to go, yeah, they're wankers. Move on. No, I agree <laughs> with that. And also, good to get some solid advice. Any <laughs> thoughts on that, D? I cannot much. I mean, it's, it's the my issues are what's the point? I mean, clearly it's just for notoriety than anything else, and it's just like because um, it was Lizard Squad that did the uh, the Christmas Day hacks <clears throat> and brought down uh, Xbox on Christmas again, Day and all that again, kind of crap. No hacks, <laughs> and it's just it's just like uh, I mean, could you? I'm sure you can think of something rather quickly, but I mean, what a mean spirited thing yeah. to do, really. What yeah. I mean. I can understand, oh, I've taken down X company's website and I've I've released this detail and, oh, look, look what the CEO was saying about that. That's yeah. bad. <clears throat> but <clears throat> taking down games for freaking people... When you've got a bunch of kids waiting to play their presents. Yeah, when when chances are your wee brother's in the room next door and now can't play World of Warcraft. Because you're a mean-spirited little shit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What's your thing going down this week with Adidas? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's because all their parents are playing these games and they feel neglected. Is it because the generation's growing up and they've been neglected by World of Warcraft? Is that what it is? Do we have maybe an answer? Your head, yeah. In which case, I'm with them. I'm support them. I'll sign up and help them. <laughs> my parents were never there for me. Where were they? Did they leave you in a ditch? No, they were playing Warcraft next door. Yeah, they were stuck in Ogram or somewhere. Maybe they were playing Warcraft next door because you're a wee dick. <laughs> Watch this space. The D-Squad's going to take down Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> the D squad that's brilliant sounds like a shit cop show <laughs> I'm pressing F5 on their website right now every every half a second everybody they, going press F5 right now <laughs> they are fucked <laughs> and it was me the D squad <laughs> single handedly <laughs> oh, I'm glad you've got that 5 megabyte internet connection <laughs> a whole farm of knobbly rabbits just trained to hit F5 <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing now with your bum? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, I think we've given those crazy kids enough of our time. Um, moving forward, um, did them to see the stuff about? Well, actually, you came more with this than I will. The um, is he a new big fan of Mass Effect? Yeah, and it, well, yeah, I guess so. I never get around to the third one, so I'm not sure how much that says I was a fan, but yeah. certainly enjoyed the first two. The answer to your question then is no, Chris. D, were you frustrated <laughs> by the the end of the third one, as a lot of people seem to be? Um, I don't yeah, know what the end is, by the way. You might not want to spoil it for folk. If you are going to spoil it, say spoilers. No, I wouldn't spoil it. Um, I suppose, yes. And the, the the thing was, when I got round to it, they'd actually redone the ending as well. And I you still didn't. Start, I, didn't they? Yeah, and I still didn't like the ending that I got. So <laughs> um, I don't actually know I'm what the ending was. <laughs> yeah. So I got disappointing ending version two. Um, oh, nice. So, but I mean, pff, I don't know what's what's an ending. Um, as long as they put out another game, I really don't give a shit. Well, that's the the uh, the kind of the kind of head developer was saying that they're not people are worried about the kind of what ending they got at the end of three and how does it affect Andromeda, which is coming next year, and apparently it doesn't affect it in the slightest. So, if you had any concerns about that whatsoever, you can just go and play Andromeda as a whole new game set in the same universe, but. They'll probably do some kind of little homage, assuming that you can bump into some old characters, I would wager, somewhere in the world. But they're basically just, they're doing a lot with um, kind of using the existing universe, but just kind of a whole, what's happening in the other side of the universe and with some other people. This is quite a nice way to do it, I think, because it means you get to keep all your mechanics without looking like you've only got one game type up your sleeve. So, well, no, no. How I've not got the best memory on the planet, right? The only thing that I can remember and took away from the ending <laughs> of that was basically that was potentially the end of um, Commander Shepard, and the suggestion basically was if we ever do do another game, then it's it's going to be another character, and the new Mass Effect Andromeda is about another character. So, 
but I, I, I'm interested to see what the kind of discard of the ending actually means. I think what it is is that they're, they're discarding the endings that anybody made because the games were famous, like kind of carried forward, I think. So I think the idea is here that whatever happens at the end of the third one, that it's not going to have a ripple effect on the universe in any way. It's null and void kind of thing. Yeah, I Fair mean, enough. that's the thing. Like, I mean, I think this is kind of one of those ones that's been slightly blown up into a story that isn't really a story. It's kind of came from, it's kind of born from the idea that in the original games, you played through one, and then you could use the the save details from Mass Effect 1 and load them into Mass Effect 2. And that would decide the kind of storyline from there. Like certain characters you might have killed off in my game, uh, D might still have had alive in his game. And it yeah. just carries on the story based on that. And that's kind of factored into it. And that did the same again from 2 to 3. And I think that's all this was, is at some point someone was asking, well, do you need your saves for Mass Effect 3 to continue that storyline in the way you did 1, 2 and 3 mm. and the answer is no because this is almost a, a reboot of the franchise, this is yeah. a, a completely different story with completely different characters set in the same universe so no you don't need your save and all the rest of it and then suddenly it's gone, oh my god they've discarded the ending of Mass Effect 3, fuck off <laughs> that's that, yeah. that that's never what Why this issue, it matter? Ah, that's not what this issue was about as far as I can tell. It was just a case of do I need to save for Mass Effect three in order to continue with that? No you don't. Fantastic. Done, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's a separate story as far as yeah. uh, kind of my awareness. I mean the the, th the only thing I saw was a great kind of uh, headline, I've just brought it back up again and it was there uh, from Forbes actually, and it was just like whichever terrible Mass Effect three ending you picked, it won't affect Andromeda. <laughs> it's like ah, great headline, love it. That, that's the article. It doesn't need an article, just that headline. <laughs> yeah, so there you that go. Works. Yeah. Um onward from I guess Mass Effect and all that kind of thing, we've got I wanted to talk a wee bit about the well, I guess it's going it's a next gen game, uh, or a current gen game. We're still looking at the PS4 Neo for this year. Did you redo this? Nope. So the concept is obviously Microsoft announced Scorpio, uh, Project Scorpio at E3, uh, and Sony have uttered that they're doing this PlayStation Neo, which is a, a more powerful PlayStation 4. However, they're still saying it's going to come in 2016. Now, considering that we're nearly in July, that leaves them five months of marketing and pushing and everything for a brand new console. Seems a little bit late, doesn't it? Or so I just it? Yeah, it's a bit strange. I think it's a bit strange, but... I mean, these sources are kind of industry kind of, uh, you know, kind of tipsters and stuff, and they're developers as well, so they're saying, oh, definitely, we're definitely going to have this console, but you just it just seems really, really weird to have held back at E3 like that. Even not E3, but do a separate event, but still seven, well, six, five months, you've basically got to do that before you've got to run up to Christmas. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I think... Well, they're saying September is when it's going to get released. Well, that, there you go. It's got to be out the door in the next six to eight weeks then to actually have supply chain out of wager. A, a while back, they were saying, like before E3, they were kind of saying September, October, around about the same time as the the PlayStation VR. And now they seem to be saying, well, now there's only really that kind of one source talking about it currently and saying, you know, it will happen before the end of the year. Yeah. And it's... Um, the, the whole thing just seems to have been... I d I don't know if I don't know if this is how it just seems to me or or how it actually is. And I'm gonna guess it's probably the first. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> guess it's just me being conspiratorial. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you had this whole thing where this document gets leaked. Because this is the thing, up until this day, they've only made kind of like one announcement and it was a very short announcement. It was the night before D three where they said, Yeah, PlayStation Neo does exist we're working on it at the moment and no we're not showing the e3 yeah. and everything else has been rumor and speculation and rumor and speculation but it came about from a document that somehow got out that gave kind of very detailed um details detailed details let's go with that one <laughs> <laughs> um on what the spec of this thing would be so it mm. would be like two and a half times more powerful than the the current playstation 4 uh, whatever the hell that is in the the infamous teraflops, I think it was eighty three billion and a half. I by my count, like four teraflops or something. They were saying it was going to be, and um, 
Oh, in fact, it's three and a half something maybe three teraflops because I think that's a big thing. See, you, the, you, the just is... just, you just get involved in teraflops. teraflops I know. Once, once you get in that route, that's it. You're just here. Teraflop. How so many teraflops was the new Xbox again? Oh, at least six. Is it six? Yeah. So I reckon <clears throat> let's make our own measurement now, right? So for every three teraflop, that equals a, a tundra flop. A so the new Xbox. Flop. The new, the new Xbox is actually two Tundra flops. <laughs> That's making a, a convoluted term even better. I like it. Yeah, I might as Can well. Can you always make it like a kipper? A kipper flop. That's kipper. it. All oh, right, sorry. I don't know. You've, you've lost me in your, your mathematical geniusness. <laughs> That's next, next, next gen. A kipper <laughs> flop. <laughs> That's when the games come out and they just the games play you. <laughs> uh, um, that, that'll be the VR, maybe. Uh, so did, did anybody think they were going to see this by the end of the year? I'm voting no. I'll vote yes. Okay. I think there is a chance and I think you're going to hear about it pretty soon. What, like two weeks kind of thing? I, th I think it's going to be pretty soon that you'll hear something about it. I think they waited. I think to, I, th I think they played... Didn't like, want to get caught in the yeah. noise? I think they played a game, let's say. I think they'll, they'll release this document and they'll let the news get out there. It says what it is, when it's coming, how it's going to be... For backwards compatible, forward compatible, whatever with uh, the PlayStation Four. Yeah. And folk just went out and oh, mumble, 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 and play Sony never say the word about it. Um, and it kind of forced uh, Microsoft's hand to the point where they actually released news on about Scorpio, and mm -hmm. actually say this is what we're doing, this is when we're doing it, and yada yada. And then if there had been a big, big, big backlash about that, then Sony's fine. Um, and if there hadn't been which so far there hasn't really been, then they're free to now go, well, by the way, we've got one too. Even yeah. though technically they let let their slip first. They let their slip first and they'll push Microsoft into a position where they kind of had to say, well, this is what we're doing to keep up. Yeah. Um, and now they can go, well, yeah, we're doing it as well because there was no big backlash. The thing so is... I think you'll hear about it. I think you'll hear about it pretty soon. And I think, yeah, there is a chance you'll see it before the end of the year. Mm. I don't think um, I think this is one of these kind of clever plays because even say they bring a console out that's five tundra flops right <laughs> and uh, and Microsoft bring out theirs that's two tundra flops I don't know but anyway let's just let's go back to the normal tier flops just for the just for illustration purposes right <laughs> but let's see let's at one see. point something like one point at eight six kipper flops at that exactly, point exactly <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wonder flop right now. Um, if we're looking at, say, Microsoft's got their six teraflop machine coming out next year at Christmas time, and Sony come out at, say, December even, with their four and a half teraflop machine or whatever, then the problem is, is that they're still going to beat Microsoft down because Microsoft, they've got a year ahead of Microsoft, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's... Microsoft are terrible at timing, basically, is what it comes down to. Which is yeah. amazing given the amount of Tundra flops that they've got with their processing. Yeah, because they're yeah. going to go from the the slower of the two consoles uh, and the more expensive of the two consoles to the faster of the two consoles, but pro by the, based on the hardware going into this new machine, the much more expensive of the two consoles, I would wager. They do seem to like getting caught out with it. I think that's <laughs> part of... Part of it is that, part of it is the timing, and Sony know that because that's what bit them with the last generation. Mm -hmm. There was a year's uh, gap between the release of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 came a year later. That's the only reason that we got a grip at all. Aye, and you know, the, that was one of the main reasons kind of still attributed to why the, the Xbox um, was so much more popular than the PS. It just it got that start, it was already there. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to see where it goes from here now. Is this, you know, is this just going to be the common thing? Do we start to see these consoles appear in every you know, few years where it's just an upgraded version? Will they just throw in an extra Terra biscuit? Yeah, exactly. Is <laughs> that um, not a kind of dinosaur? And throw it back out again, yeah. <laughs> I, I know I did download a couple of Terra biscuits for Ark Survival Evolved, I remember that. Mm. Did team a Terra biscuit at one point? Brutal. So the the one analogy you keep hearing anytime folk are discussing these new consoles that really gets on my tits is this whole oh it's like your mobile phone it's like you've got you've got no problem upgrading your mobile phone every year or every two years so your your console is just going to be like that 
It's like, well, yeah, but I pay a contract with my mo- mobile phone, and when I buy it, it's subsidised. Mm-hmm. I'm paying at most, I think, a hundred quid. I've paid for all it, the phone. Yeah. Uh, quite often, I've just packed up whatever one was free at mm-hmm. the time when I've did the upgrade. The, the, this isn't the same. Microsoft aren't subsidising me to buy their their new Xbox. Yeah. And yeah, I'm paying monthly. Absolutely, I'm paying monthly fucking Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Yeah. But that's not going towards the cost of the next console that they bring it. So yeah. th- that whole argument is just, I don't know why people are buying that. What Be- if they do that? What, uh, you're paying what you're paying five or each a month or something like that? Mm-hmm. Right, so see, see, for example, Microsoft or Sony or whoever turned around and says, give us £15 a month, give us £20 a month, and we'll give you a new console. Would yeah, you do it? I, I mean, I would be up for I would that, do absolutely. That would be a great idea. If they actually made it some sort of subscription based thing like the phones where you mm. you're paying month you're you're paying monthly for the live service and it's going towards the cost of the console that you've bought. Yeah. And they're for reduces the price of the console. Each time when you're buying it and I'm spending like a hundred quid every two years to upgrade the console. I would love that idea. It sounds fantastic. Mm. But that's not what we're getting. And no. yet but that's what they want to equate it to. It's to funny they could pull, they could pull that off thinking about it because I mean realistically um, it's no different. I mean, you're paying £500 for a phone, so you're paying £500 for a console, it would map. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it is, I think as a business model, I think it would work. I think it's a great idea. And it makes people even more incentivized to actually pay for live or PlayStation Network or whatever else. Because at the end of, end of the day, what you're actually paying for is the future proofing. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Fantastic. But, you uh, um, I don't know. I'm remember, just... you've still got the option to buy the card so outright if you prefer that way. But that, if the option is there, do you think it's a good option? Don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my decision. No, it's not. Okay, why not? Because it's going to take away. Happy Christmases every four or five years where you go like, oh, your console. So it'll just, just, for it'll just create arguments with my parents. What do you want for Christmas? Well, now that it's come round at that every five years where I know I can tell you what you can actually buy me and we don't have this argument three months in the run up to Christmas. <laughs> well, now we don't even have that. So you just buy, buy me games. some, buy so just give me some fucking pants vouchers and get on with it. So what I'm saying is it's going to make my life a fucking misery. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> Granted. <laughs> this is a word that I never thought would ever come out of my mouth, but I can't argue with it. <laughs> I thought I'd an argument for everything, but... Not that one? Not that one. I'm trying to think. I'm not patient <laughs> enough to wait till Christmas for things. I tend to just go and buy them myself most. I mean, I don't... I did I? Did I? No? I think the last, I think I got a 360 many moons ago as a, a Christmas present. Um, and I can't remember how I fell for that one, but generally just when something comes out, I'm like, want it and just get it. So, well, where does it stop, right? So, where do you where do you stop buying stuff and start leasing it? So, just using the Christmas well, analogy least, again. And so a non stuff is leased though, like well, houses, and cars. In a nonsense Christmas related crappy example <laughs> kind of a way, right? What's to stop you leasing your pants and your socks? Nothing. So you get new pants and new socks every month and you never get holes or skid marks that won't Under go away. Entrepreneurial spirit is the only limit, are there? Yeah, no, the, do it. yeah, no, the answer to that is absolutely nothing. There is nothing stopping that. Apart from the, the fact, the shameful fact it doesn't exist already? That, yeah, that, there are now companies that will mail you your razors every month. Mm. And as you can see, they work fantastically. <laughs> Sponsored by it, ten years at Beard. <laughs> there are there are now companies out there that will mail you your dinner. That's true. On a daily basis, and but that's give you my the, dinner. And give you they're the my razors. I'm not leasing them at that point. I give you the instructions how to cook it. I don't want to live in a world where my pants don't belong to me. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> you are you're an author of nightmare fuel, D, I tell you. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, yeah, I don't want to live in a world where they are strictly leased. I don't really want my pants to be then sent back and 
recycled and reissued. Yeah, you're on, you're on tier two recycle pants. I mean, <laughs> how depressing is that? It's pretty depressing right now. <laughs> I think I want to make a t-shirt now that says, uh, I don't have enough over my pants are least. <laughs> 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 if you pop over to ratworks.net in about an hour and a half you'll be able to buy one <coughs> I um, rent my pants there you go that's that's a slogan for a t-shirt <coughs> I do fine nice. yeah. so I guess that takes us strangely and tenuously beautiful on to VR VR pants VR pants I don't know why it's, uh, it's nice to be actually tenuous for the first time since we started this show <laughs> so there is no segue here there, these aren't the segues you're looking for Unless you think VR is pants. Ha ha ha. Still tenuous, so I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of catch up on VR. I, I'd missed quite a good proportion, I think. I'm not sure how, actually. Uh, I missed a good proportion of the VR coverage for um, E3. E3. Uh, and I've just been catching up in the last week or so. I, I think, I, what did I catch? The um, Resident Evil 7 playthroughs that a couple of guys managed to capture. Um, nope. Just bag of nope <laughs> fly out nope oh no fucking way just can't cope with it um but there's there seems to be a lot of this kind of like presentation this kind of presentation style where they go well this is you playing the game so they've got somebody with a headset on then they've got people sitting beside them watching them play it but on a monitor they've got them like comped in with the footage like actually comped in you kind of go that's not how that works it's yeah i think they're just really struggling to know how to sell to illustrate, I suppose it makes sense because it's one of those things like putting um, computers in movies, they're not interesting things to be clicking about on, everybody's got one it's not like, you know, flashy screens and all that crap, so it's a really odd thing to try to market, but yeah. I've been I'm quite excited about it I'm, I think I'll really want to wait till probably the end of the year to make a better kind of informed decision, because my original idea was to buy a PS4 and the previously called Morpheus um, PSVR, but I kind of want to wait and see to kind of scope it out a little bit more because I do have a PC here that's quite a, a horse, so I might be better buying something. If Microsoft's next offering does support the Oculus, for example, or the Vive, whatever, then it might be an idea that I can say, well, I've got my PC, let's buy something to work with both. Because I've not heard any ramblings of the PSVR will work on a PC at all, and it's unlikely because Sony loves proprietary, so... No, but there were some rumours about PSVR working on PC, but it was very, very vague and doesn't be very much. And I, I, I mean, I don't really, I don't really see it happening unless it struggles to sell on the PlayStation in the first place. Yeah, I think that's the only reason it would. Um, and there's been enough kind of chat now, even from Microsoft themselves. Like, I mean, even at E3 when they were talking about Scorpio, um, VR was mentioned in the same breath. Yeah. So whether it is Oculus or something else, like you know, there, there is certainly rumblings that, that that particular console is going to be VR compatible in some way. So yeah, yeah. um, it's 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 another one. It's a year out, and I don't know how long. Yeah, I don't know how much that's going to affect them. A yeah. bit like the whole PlayStation Neo Xbox Scorpio thing in the fir in, in the first place. Yeah. Um, the fact That'd be a hell of a console, wouldn't it? PlayStation Neo, Xbox Scorpio, this one machine. <laughs> Just bundle it. Oh, hey, that is it's coming to steal your least pants and you least expect it. That is my dream. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the other hand, I don't think there's any real kind of issue in waiting that long for it to come out because at the moment, everything you've seen is just demos and tech demos anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I so saw the Batman one as well, where you're basically paying, like, it looks like you're going to pay top dollar for what's a 45 minute experience. Mm -hmm. It seems to be, I mean, th th they were talking about it, it's kind of mainly based on. Sounds really cool. I, d should I, I don't know whether. No. Actually, I'm not going to do that because I suppose I'm just going to get accused of freaking spoilers and shit. But <laughs> uh, two words detective mode. That's it. Yes. So, um, you get to put on the mask. You actually pick up and put on the mask, that's it, that's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're, going to have to sit, you're going to have to sit in like a, a bucket of hankies when you uh, play that game. <laughs> spoilers, fuck it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's the thing is, like, you will have noticed during the 83 presentations that they talked about Resident Evil and you can play the whole game and then everything else was... What did we have? We had Battlefront, X-Wing, 
VR mission. Okay. Singular. So, so I much guess, like battle, much like Battlefront, they're giving you RTL content theoretically. Uh, pretty much. Uh, it seems to be like a single, a single mission where you can play in VR. Um, and then you had the, the Batman one, and then Final Fantasy VR X seven seven. I keep saying seven fifteen. Final Fantasy fifteen VR experience. <laughs> Again, experience is one of these things we're going to tag on mm -hmm. when they've done like a... I mean, don't be wrong, I think, if it was for me, I understand that VR is not something you want to sit and have a headset on for an eight-hour session. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, fatigue's quite a big factor. Um, but charge accordingly. I would I would rather do an hour, an hour and a half of a great experience that really kind of blew me away and go, that was amazing, but I would happily spend 20 quid on that. Yeah. I don't want to spend 50. I mean, I think we're a long way out before that's kind of full-fledged games as standard. There's some already in the works. There's some already coming. Uh, I don't remember the name of this sci-fi one that they showed. Uh, no, it's gone. <laughs> Flashpoint or something? No, it was something similar to that. Yeah. Uh, it did look quite cool just purely because it, it's got its own peripheral. So like every, every, up until now every VR game you've seen that is shooting is shooting with pistols because you're using two separate things or yeah. or it's like guns but you're using the controller to control it. Whereas yeah. they're actually making a peripheral that you can use like a, a rifle, like an assault rifle. So it's kind of two-handed okay. and tracks and seem to track really well. Uh, that looked pretty smart. Awesome. I think they've always gone to those challenges of how you get around and stuff because I think people would love the you know the walking pods you get that you can run in. A lot people would love that until they realise how knackered it'd be running across one courtyard. Oh yeah, and where the hell do you store it? Well, oh, yeah, you store <laughs> it next to your you store it next to your uh, your exercise bike and your treadmill. So you store it. That's the danger though. Like you're going to end up with God knows how many peripherals just to support this thing. So you've got yeah. you know, ones that work for pistols, ones that work for rifles, and what it just end up cutting up your room like fucking next to your pile of rock band shite. It's, <laughs> True. That's something they really need to watch out for. Yeah. D, any any fancy any fanciful notions towards VR? Um I think <laughs> I was waiting on another no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um ooh, I think it has to be I think we've had a, a kind of debate, or I've maybe kind of said it before. I mean, it's it's not at the moment what I would reach for for entertainment, but given, I suppose, uh, an entertaining enough experience, mm -hmm. then it's not going to be something you can just di dismiss. So, I mean, th th why I'm saying that is the reason why I play games is to sit on my arse with uh, something in my hand and kind of play games and shoot stuff. Mm -hmm. um, with the kind of the, the VR stuff and everything that's coming out, you've got a kind of the headset, and it must be amazing to have this kind of 360 world and, and look around. I, yeah. I, my only concern is it's going to end up at a point where you're sitting playing a game on a Friday night and you won't be able to tell if your house is burning down or you're getting buggled whilst you're captaining the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> Who cares though? You're, you're captain of the Starship Enterprise. Fuck the house. <laughs> Imagine you got the ship blown up, you took your headset off, and it was like you were sitting in a <laughs> shard of a house, like you'd actually just been blown up by the Klingons. <laughs> this is so immersive. <laughs> did you Did you see that one actually? The That did look like fun though. The bridge one, yeah. The four player Star Trek. Was it I bridge? Last ten minutes as bridge well. commander or yeah, yeah, that was with uh, Johnny I mean, Johnny LaForge. Sh he was, he sh captain. Yeah, surely that's worth it alone. I think so. I, I think it will be entertaining. It's just at, at the moment I don't see when I'm going to fit it into my busy <laughs> life. <laughs> well, Zarak on uh, the YouTube channel agrees with you, so that's <laughs> that's a bonus. <laughs> he didn't, you know, if you're not looking at the channel, D, he didn't say no, don't know, fuck it. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, no, I'm really excited about it. I think my biggest concern is that um, I like to game with mother half, and I would like to. 
I would like to for us both to be able to do like things together. But that, that's going to be quite an expensive endeavor for what you're going to do once in the blue moon. Because as you say, you come home from work at night, you don't necessarily everything you game want a super intense experience. You know, sometimes I'll come. I mean, I'm looking forward to background audio on the Xbox One shortly, just because I'm looking forward to putting on some new albums that I've found and playing the division and just grinding away for six hours straight and just having a great time myself. That's what I like to do in a game. So the idea of coming home and like flinging myself around the room like an asshole is, don't get me wrong, it's, it comes naturally to me, but I'd like to, uh, I'd like the option, I guess, is the thing. One of my concerns is, I, I can see it as a great immersive experience and when the graphics are up to speed and stuff, it'll look absolutely amazing and it'll be great as a, a kind of a relative experience. And I think it'll be great in more kind of educational environments and for other uses that will kind of uh, assist people. I suppose my concern is, and this is, I, I'm not necessarily stealing from futuristic visions from movies and so forth, mm -hmm. but I genuinely do think it's a potential concern is the fact that it will actually replace reality for a lot of folk. Um, and I, I, I just, I, I don't like that vision of the future. I don't think that's likely because I think these people who are of that ilk are that risk group, if you will. Um, I think they already do that with things like Warcraft and Dota and stuff. It doesn't, it's not, I don't think putting a headset on really creates any more immersion. Yeah, this guy. But I don't, I know what you mean. There's a, there's a fear that people just become dribbling messes kind of thing in these headsets. But they're already doing that in front of the screens. I think those people are That's why he's got a beard. He's hiding the dribble. No, that's where he stores his food. He's like a wee sparrow <laughs> in there. He stores his crisps. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the flip side of the coin. It's like I'm already paying. Uh, I'm already saving up for the, the psychiatric help that I'm going to need for the PS, PTSD that I'm going to get. From just well, living in this that another console that's coming world. out. <laughs> the PTSD, that's, PTSD. The, that's the next generation, aren't I? Let's get 18 Tundra flops. <laughs> um, but that's a good point, actually. It's something that my other half had raised as well, is the fact that if, if you play, like, Call of Duty or F at all, especially you look at how realistic Battlefield 1's looking, and then you throw your... I mean, okay, Battlefield 1's not going to be a headset-driven, but mentally, your brain's not ready for that kind of immersion that you're actually... You're, you are gonna, people are going to get kind of rude. As time goes on, as it gets more accurate and, kind of, you know... It could be. I am not care about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I, I mean, fun. like, uh, I don't know. Like, honestly, I mean, that's the thing, is it could be. And because we don't have the technology yet, or we don't have the technology commonplace and, and long-term yeah. use... Who knows? Like, yeah, it starts out as a joke of, yeah, going to live in this other world for all this time and actually get PTSD when you commit into the real world. Yeah. Who knows? I, we don't actually know what sort of effects it has. We know there is some sort of effect on your, your psyche. There is that disconnect because th th there is that kind of initial thing of yeah. um, People freaking out when they look down and there's no legs there, and like you know, that that has happened, and it's just a it's such a small thing, but it is a small psychological nudge. Yeah. So who knows? We we'll have to wait and see. Aye, it's but yeah, the only way you're going to find out is to actually do it. Uh, yeah, I'll be a guinea pig. Yeah, same here. I'll, I'll be half a <laughs> guinea pig, frankly. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's just I'm, I'm in excited. VR you can be a guinea pig in your little cage and run on your fucking wheel till your heart's content yes. <laughs> can be a lovely uh, rabbit did anybody remember watching I think I remember watching Jack Septic Eye doing the uh, is it, um, Down Among the Sleep I think the game was called mm -hmm. you play as a wee baby or a wee toddler did you ever uh, see that one? Doesn't it ring a bell? So he's a toddler and he's like, he's kind of like his mum's there and it's all nice at the start and he's, he's in VR. I think it was the DK2 on the Oculus he was using. It was a long time ago. And um, he's, this wee baby's kind of sitting in his kind of, his pen, kind of penned in with his toys and all that stuff. And uh, his teddy bear starts talking to him with this kind of New Yorker accent and it's like kind of a bit creepy. And then he goes into his wardrobe because the teddy bear lures him there. And he goes in between the, the, the jackets and he goes between the jackets and there's this big opening and it kind of goes off into like fucking anti Narnia kind of thing. Uh, but it just looked really creepy. But and again in VR, I was sitting going, You would not get me to play that with a mouse and keyboard on a 14 inch <laughs> black and white TV. Screw VR. I am not going near it. Yeah, but on our side, on our hand, I'm I'm a really big fan of kind of those kind of visceral experience things. So like the ones where you go underwater and all that, I love the idea of all that stuff. So I'm terrified of the shark, for example. That sounds like a great idea to me, jump <laughs> into that and go, this is really uncomfortable but cool, you know? So I like that idea or the idea of like rally games and like that kind of, you know, kind of um, hands-on reality stuff. It looks really awesome to me. Yeah. I mean, if I, I 
don't remember which one it was, but it was funnily enough one of Jack's videos that kind of sold me on the whole idea that this is a thing, that this could work, because I was never able to wrap my head around what you were actually getting out of VR that you don't get from a game just now. And it is that yep. place, or, and it is that thing of being in a place, in position, in a, a three-dimensional world. And whatever video it was, it was just the start of it as he's talking away and doing his intro, he picks up some cube and throws it into the air with one hand and catches uh -huh. it in the other. Yeah. And it's just that simple act of being able to naturally, without having to calculate or anything else, throw something up in the air in a virtual world and catch it again in your mm -hmm. other hand without... A natural motion? Yeah, just completely without thinking about it. Um, just shows how well it pinpoints you in that space and gives you a perspective that you just don't get on a monitor and can't get on a monitor. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of, it does really open up this whole other world that you, you cannot get to, that you cannot experience through a monitor. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, that did it for me. I was just like, yeah, I'm in. I, I want to do that. I want to experience that for sure. Yeah. Um, totally up for it. If um, Facebook doesn't fuck it all up for us. <laughs> well, the the thing with Facebook is is that uh, as much as they're assholes, they've got they're really good at uh, funding. So if, at the end of the day, if Facebook hadn't been the guys to fund this, it could have stayed in development hell for a very long time. No, think no, so. No, no. I mean that's the thing. It was maybe Oculus wouldn't have been the the thing, but it, it was coming. There's enough companies it was, working it out. Yeah, it was coming anyway with it being a, an open. VR project. Mm. So you had the the Oculus kickstarted, you had the, the Vive in the works and all the rest of it. All these things would have still happened. Um but that's the thing. So when it was kickstarted it was that. It was open VR and yeah it's still open source and all the rest of it. But I'm gonna put it down squarely to the influence of Facebook um buying them over that now they're suddenly having VR exclusives and just paying companies to be exclusive only on their one console. Yeah. So the the big one that's causing the controversy at the moment was I don't know if you saw I know you saw it, Kay, uh, the giant cop. Yes. Um, cop. Cop. Giant cop. C O P. Giant polis. <laughs> um, Stop it. It was originally announced. It was originally announced for the the Vive. Yeah. And then. Oculus step in, pay them a lot of money, and now it's a, an Oculus VR exclusive. Yeah. And it's... I just... I think this is what's... If anything is going to kill VR before it starts, it is going to be this. Yeah. It's like there is not enough headsets out there where... Well, that's it. You're getting beat max VHS I, fights with people yeah. that aren't going to buy video recorders. It's, a, it's like every headset that's out there counts because the only pay, way these developers are going to make money on the games is if people buy the games and if you're already splitting the market that that's not going to be enough to go around therefore they're not going to make more games therefore the whole thing's going to fall flat in its arse and yeah. their insistence to just keep trying to hedge off hedge off fence off games for themselves <laughs> hedgehog. <laughs> hedgehog games for themselves mm -hmm. i think is the biggest risk to vr it's not a case of whether people all take it up or not. I mean, it's going to be a good few years. It's going to be yeah, five years before this is commonplace, but you'll get enough into folks' houses that they'll be able to show other people. And then when people try them on, they'll actually get what it's about. And then it'll start to take off and it'll get yeah. somewhere. But none of that happens if they don't actually get the games out there. Mm -hmm. And the developers get the, get the, the cash for the games in the first place in order yeah. to make more games. And I think, yeah, this... I'm not going to say this, I, I, I'm not going to claim this to be my, my own words, I think Total Biscuit, I think, was probably the first person I heard to uh, vocalise it, but there's been quite a few since, and it's, it is this whole idea of you want to have a game exclusive to a console, batter in, but this is like a it's a platform. This is... The, yeah, this that's, is that's, yeah it's, it's like a mouse or keyboard, really. Yeah, it's like having a game exclusive to a monitor. Yeah. Uh, that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Yeah, that's true. Um, that, uh, And that, I think, is what, what its biggest risk is. That, I think, is what's going to end up killing it off if they're not careful. 
and I was the first to go. I was the first at the time when Facebook were buying Oculus, and I, my in a, initial reaction was, yeah, fantastic. So they've got real money behind them now. This will actually go ahead. This will actually yeah, get out in the market. And I thought that's a good thing. And lots yeah. of lots of people are in me going, oh, I don't like that. You're just going to get all sorts of friend lists and other estate popping up and people <laughs> people poking you in VR. I'm not dead against that. <laughs> which, yeah, we should explain is something completely different in Scotland. Um... <laughs> But considering there was actually a, a VR porn um, Demo. booth at E3 this year, that's... I would not want to be the PR guy uh, or girl with that. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what poking in VR is if you're Scottish, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but boners and puddles everywhere. <laughs> pretty much. So, I, I mean, I was all for them, taken for it at the time, but now yeah. you're just like, well, you're getting greedy, guys, and you're going to cause yourself problems by doing it. Yeah. Did you see Gabe Newell's uh, statement? I heard something about this today. It was just, I thought it was a Reddit post that's kind of appeared I, on about I the... think it might have been, but he basically said that they're basically going to fund lots of little studios and say, here's your money for your game on the basis that they don't go exclusive. It's basically to block exclusivity. <laughs> they'll, pay, they'll pay them basically the ideas that they get um forwarded steam credits basically so any sales they would normally make on steam to make money from their game they're getting that forwarded to develop the game yeah uh, and the only agreement they have to have is they don't go exclusive with anybody not even uh mm -hmm. valve and nope. they're allowed to make the gear for any headset they want or anything they want as long as it's not an exclusivity thing mm -hmm. so gabe Newell, uh, if you're not familiar with is the head of valve and that's quite a noble thing to do in this day and age he's a, a man of a kind of strange principles and people are kind of he's <laughs> like uh he's i think the best way to describe him is esoteric um but he's he, he's got some good moves as well and at the end of the day as long as there's people varying opinions and power positions we're going to get at least something interesting happening if not always the right thing you know yeah i am a, i think i think that's certainly a good move if it turns out to be what it's been presented yeah. How this whole story came about was some redditor posting it up after an email that was sent to him, rather than, yeah. you know, so it's not some big public announcement that Valve have made at this point. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll need to see exactly what the validity of all that is and how it actually works. If it turns out to be what it is, i.e., you want to develop a VR game, yeah, we'll help you we'll subsidize you for it under the understanding that you don't go exclusive either with us or anyone else if you want to make a game for the playstation or you want to make it for oculus or you want to make it for if you want to make it for all three batter in we won't hold you to it um just as a, a counter argument to oculus going we'll give you a shitload of money if you make a game for us and only us mm -hmm. it's a great publicity move we'll see yes. how, we'll see how it turns out we'll see if We'll see, if uh, we'll see if that's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, certainly Valve don't need the money, neither does Facebook. So, no. um, what they're yeah. looking for is adverts inside of your eyes. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, we'll, we'll see how that actually turns out. If that turns out to be how they, how they actually handle it, and if yeah. they do, awesome, fantastic. Because it does need something. It needs something to keep it going until mm -hmm. it becomes commonplace. Just, yeah. now, just now it's just going to be early adopters and if you're not servicing the early adopters who are back to poking inside VR <laughs> then yeah it's, it's going to struggle it's not going to take it's not going to take off it's not going to be there in five years time so yeah, yeah that's my thoughts rambling so what, are you, there. what one are you buying at the moment um playstation's the way i'm going just purely for i, I think it's going to be the most stable um okay. i think it's and it's obviously just going to focus on games mm. because yes there are educational applications and everything else and i think that's very commendable that. fuck it i don't care i want to play games right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, so. I'm, I'm still in vive camp at the moment is where i'm at the problem being that i need to move house though because as much as i love this little room i i don't know get we rigging cameras in here yeah um so that's in an ideal situation, Vive, I think, in terms of accessibility, probably more likely buy a PlayStation um, set 
I think that's probably more the case. Actually, what I'd probably be more inclined to do at the moment is go and buy a DK2 off eBay and just plug it into my existing machine and be done with it. Yeah, the, the difference between the two it really isn't worth it. Like, yeah, really I've heard this. If I can get one for 50 quid, then I can get a headache. I'm all right with that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have you any preference what you would buy or would you wait and see what Microsoft offer? Uh, I'm going to go with actual reality. Okay. So AR, so you actually want to do augmented or? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got no preference just now because I have no actual have you tried desire it? to. What's that? Have you tried any? any I've, no, in all fairness, I've not tried them, but just from the, the the kind of demos just now, it's obviously still in its early stages, although it's it's at the kind of uh, kind of production and kind of release stages, but yeah. it's it's still in its infancy, and there's nothing yet that. I think will make me go wow. I mean, so I, I know somebody, for example, um, who does uh, model airplane flying. Mm -hmm. are kind of uh, quite a, a quaint uh, kind of pastime. And how they've developed recently is they're actually adding the likes of kind of cameras onto their model airplanes. Yeah. And they've got their v the kind of like full headsets on them. So what they're they're kind of flying about in their planes, and it's as if they're kind of flying. So they get that sensation. Yeah. It's in kind of a uh, high def uh, kind of uh, viewing. So yeah. To cut from that to what is kind of the graphics that you're getting in VR just now, I'd I'd rather fly a model airplane with kind of with the view off of that rather than play a game in VR okay. just now. Um, I just mm -hmm. think that would be visually more stimulating. Mm. So my point is, when it advances a bit more, then I'll probably be interested because it's all very well being immersed in VR, but if you're still in an overwhelmingly obvious digital environment, then a lot of the point goes out for me. So un unless it's an obvious environment, let's say, for example... It's, the, it's about the fantasy element, though, is it not? It depends on the, the game that you're playing, I suppose, to a degree. It's, it's hard to kind of quantify mm. or explain properly. Um, but if it's, I'd be interested. I'm totally contradicting myself, right? Let's say, for example, Portal, maybe. Yeah. That mm. kind of demo that we saw uh, getting played, um, that kind of slightly interests me. But that Dragon fucking football game that we saw at E3, for example, really doesn't. Didn't like the look of it or anything. Yeah, they were flying about and playing capture the flag up towers and stuff. I didn't see that. That's that? awesome. <laughs> well, that, that was one of the kind of the, the VR demonstrations they had. So guys, the whole... I'll be back in two seconds. I've got a cat squeaking. Too, so <laughs> I... no yeah, it was kind of, it was kind it's of, hard kind to of explain. I just I, I, makes it, I... <laughs> yeah, I just if I'm going to be immersed, I, I suppose I just want to be immersed. Um, if the environment is designed, like I say. If it is fantasy, but it's kind of still well drawn and well visualized, then maybe I would be into it and I could immerse myself in it. But if yeah. it's if it's basically Minecraft, I, I I really don't give a shit. It's it's technically a backward step as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it needs to go kind of one way or the other. But this I kind of quickly just tried to grab. Uh, they are remaking uh, an old game called Battlezone at the moment where you're in a, a kind of virtual tank and it's it's almost this is kind of one of the playstation's biggest um pushes for the, the whole vr thing but it, it takes it to the other extreme it's like being part of it's like being inside drawn almost you know it's, it's all very linear and very neon type um kind of graphical styles okay so it's uh, rather than having because that's the thing is like, uh, eventually i think it will it'll get to the point where the graphics are so hyper real that it will be just that a virtual reality um but i think the other way to do it is to just to go the, the opposite way uh and i think that kind of really interests me that kind of piques me as this high you know, hyper realized hyper graphical style so where it's not uber cartoony per se but it's yeah tron i think it's probably the easiest way to describe it it's where you're, you're not trying to recreate a reality uh, or you're not trying to recreate our reality just a reality um and i think i think that looks absolutely awesome uh, this thing is getting a, a lot of buzz about it and it's kind of it's the opposite of what kind of a lot of people are expecting from vr because that's what they're expecting is this whole um kind of true to life 
immersiveness where you're kind of walking about in real life kind of situations and real life style areas and graphics. But it doesn't need to be that. You know, people seem to think there'll be a disconnect between this idea of like, if it doesn't look real, then it's not going to feel real. But I mean, the, the opposite seems to work just as well. Um, but yeah, I think this sort of link could be absolutely awesome for it. Uh, I suppose I suppose I need to test it at the moment because all I'm really seeing is this kind of um, step back in, in kind of graphics at the moment mm -hmm. and that's all I'm seeing so I've yeah. got no kind of real world, I've not been immersed in any of the environments and I, I could kind of maybe sit down and play this and go oh my god this is the best shit I've ever kind of played in my life uh, other than Sensi Soccer um, so <laughs> I, I, could, I could change in a heartbeat um, so yeah that, that maybe it's just the problem that I've not had the actual immersive experience yet Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I agree. You look at that just now, and you go, oh, "That looks like pretty low poly PlayStation Two type game." Like, yeah, you know, it really doesn't look like much. Um, and I think that's where the uh, that's where the issue is with trying to sell VR. It all comes from is because it doesn't look that great at the moment until you actually stick a headset on. I, I don't think Andy can really get what it's what it does. Yeah, what you what units have you tried? None whatsoever. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I, I mean, I really struggled with it for a while until I saw that video. Until you saw someone throw throw a thing in the air and actually catch it in a three D space. Yeah, and that just kind of clicked it for me. Um, I've only tried the well, I've obviously tried the Gear VR. No, have you tried all the kind of cheap versions, cardboard ones, and all that? I tried the cardboard and that. I mean, yeah, it was, it's a novelty, isn't it? Yeah, it was. That was fun enough, but. No, I mean it. I've only tried D. I've only tried DK two on the, the developer kit two for Oculus. I tried that, and I mean that was. I think it was that the seven twenty p model. I think mm -hmm. um, that I really thought that was. I, that's what sold it to me. Just the idea of you can forget that you got a headset on after a few, like a, after a very short period of time. It's very kind of, and that that wasn't the best. I mean that was that had massive errors with like kind of uh, page tearing and all that stuff. Yeah. And the game that I tested on it was the game that I bought uh, from on Steam. Um, I'm actually the only person in the world that says the game he bought on Steam <laughs> um, was uh, Stranded game. Deep. And Stranded Deep was incredible. Stranded Deep. Uh, Stranded, the, the, the sequel to Bo. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> world, ex world exclusive. <laughs> Bo Deep, The Revenge. You, you have Hideo Kojima's next game that's not been made yet. No, uh, Stranded Deep is um, a company, uh, the, the team are called... So I've like this, uh, I don't think the... Team Stranding. Deep. Is it an indie company called... Is indie it Stranded Marvel? Deep? Is that what it's... Yeah, Stranded, I'm sure it's Stranded Deep. Okay. Uh, I'm going <laughs> Steam Live just now. No, you could be absolutely right, I'll get good. Uh, but yeah, Stranded yeah. Deep basically is you and you're, in, you're on a desert yes. island and you, your whole purpose in the game is to, you, you <laughs> crash in a plane at the start uh, you've got to survive on an island. They know the islands are procedurally generated, so there is no real map. Um, you go from island to island, try to find resources to kind of build shelter and all that stuff. You can go like wreck diving and just really fucking cool game. Uh, really chilled out as well. So mm -hmm. again, I, I, that's what made me think this is the balls. I would love to get involved in this stuff. So I would. I think that um, for me, that's the thing. I want that kind of like, you know, kind of slightly ethereal experience, like you are saying, D, about the lack of reality. The whole reason I would want it was for that kind of otherworldly jazz, just to see what it's like. I sound like a complete stoner, don't I? <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with alternative reality. I just have a problem with the... Yeah, the capacity to make the, it the, the, the quality of the realities that they're offering. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of how immersive it's going to be, it's still going to take you out, and it's... it's the best you're going to feel at the moment is you're in the movie Tron, from, from what I'm seeing just now, um, which is, from a gamer aspect, a step back, of course, because what everybody's pushing for is kind of high-def, amazing kind of graphics, the best light effects, and who can ah, draw the most amount of strands of hair on your female character and all that kind of thing. Yeah, but that's a limitation because, at the end of the day, if your console's already under stress, rendering something like The Division... I'm not looking for it. I'm not, I understand the, the kind of the, the limitations, all right. and, I'm, and I'm not looking for the, kind of the excuses of the technology, but, but what I'm saying is it's not the technology yet. is limited just now. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're right enough. You're okay, I it. completely agree. But uh, <laughs> I would like to second that by saying, I don't know, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So for the meantime, so basically, I'm going to, I'm thinking Vive. You're thinking uh, PlayStation, uh, Zane, and D. You're thinking hold off and see what comes next. Yeah, I mean, the best I'm going to do is just have two long bits of cardboard attached to my head and my TV on the wall. That's about as much as I'll spend <laughs> at the moment. Well, Google Cardboard's free. Google Cardboard? Have you not seen it? No, let's have a, a little look. cardboard box. I think, I think you pay a tenner for it built for you uh, with a little template. You can print it yourself and make I'm it. I'm paying somebody to build me cardboard. I know I'm a lazy bastard, right? But yeah. that's even yeah. far stretch for me. Well, the alternative is that you go and get a piece of cardboard and you cut out the template they give you for nothing. Would you uh, would you want to do that? There are there are a couple of plastic lenses involved as well. It's not just. It depends how complex this. Oh, hang on! You never said anything about lenses. I just thought I was cutting a bit of cardboard out of you. <laughs> yeah, no. Google got Google got a a. a, a oh no! Box. Fuck that! I'll pay ten pound for that. It's not a problem. Right. Google got a box called Google Cardboard, basically, and you plop you plop your phone in the front of it, and it divides your eyes down, and it's got little lenses in it and stuff, and it gives you a kind of. It's not the worst thing in the world. It gives you a kind of cheap idea of what it's like and if you've got like a bigger phone it's worth giving it a spin have you tried that yeah yeah is it any good it's all right i mean it depends it's a pain the, it's a pain in the ass with a smaller phone it doesn't really work but but like a, a upwards of like five or six inch phone it's mega you, you weren't using one of those wee small motorolas that you flip over i was i was using a nokia <laughs> i was using a nokia nokia 3310 nokia to use a snake in this eye and some numbers in this eye the shit <laughs> they need to really work on it but I have a look at on the internet videos. You can also buy those cheap plastic kind of boxes that have got like kind of adjustable bits on them that are like 20 quid that you put your phone into as well. So that's a kind of like, that uses your phone's accelerometer and all that stuff to and see where your head's at. So it's kind of, it's quite a cute way of doing it. Again, a phone's much more underpowered than a than a PC or anything would be, but it's a cute kind of way of kind of checking it out, you know? Who are you laughing at? <laughs> It just looks, uh, I don't know, um, Zach, Zach in the chat is basically recycling the, the cardboard from Metal Gear Solid to use for his spawn. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's, that's one of the best ideas I've heard all week. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the note of VR, I think we've cleared that one up. Um, <laughs> going forward. Indeed. Yeah. Enough of this game, Shaq. Well, I've got some quick movie chat. I think we're going to spend too long on this one this week. Um, first of all, sad death of uh, Anton Yelchin. Yeah, this. that's a shame, that's a shame. Mm. Looks like just a, a kind of really strange freak accident. Um, Car were recalled. Yeah, um, yeah, not much more you can say about that. I mean, obviously he's commonly known um, as uh, Chekhov in the, the new Star Trek, um, and that brilliant line, Victor, Victor! <laughs> Victor, um, Victor, 55! <laughs> And it, it kind of, I only knew him in one other uh, role that he did, which was the movie adaptation of uh, Odd Thomas. Yeah, um, which, which which I thoroughly enjoyed because I, lo I love the the kind of I've read most of the Odd Thomas books and just to yeah. see it in uh, movie style, and it was kind of reasonably well done. So if you want a Sunday afternoon movie, I'd, I'd highly re recommend that. Yeah, I also liked when Charlie Bartlett as well it was in that with Cat Dennings and Robert Downey Jr. Uh, it's a good wee film as well. Good wee actor, solid wee actor. So a bit of a shame, um, as I say on these kind of unfortunate accidents i guess it's uh, rare that it's not like some crazy drug condition or something like that or kind of thing is. so that's just our out and out basic shame you know yeah have I mean, you seen all the the kind of the conspiracy theorists popping up again because he's oh, he's a member of the 27 club ah uh, so if, if, if we look at how many celebrities have died this year which are quite a few and I think he might be the first one he's died at 27. So uh, where's the conspiracy theorist for the 56 club? Uh, uh, the 60 club. The 16 club. Well, the thing is, is, what's really funny is that if you look, we're not funny, ha, 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 the guy died, Brian. Uh, <laughs> is the, um, if you look at how all this stuff works, people always like, you know, spring up and go, this guy died, that guy died. But in actual fact, that it's just, you know, it happens, and, and because we've got such a large, wide-open array of news outlets that you find these things out a lot more than you normally would. Um, and But the funny thing about it is, the one thing I hate more than anything is, see if you look, if you use Facebook on the desktop like I do, down the side of the screen, it's got Facebook trending, and every time somebody's name's there, it starts off with, like, I don't know, freaking George Clooney. Then it goes, George Clooney's at this place with whoever photographed blah, 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 e-magazine, right? And you go... All right, Brown, George Clooney did a thing. But every time it starts with the person's name, and each time I think it's like an obituary, every single time. Because <laughs> I found out Prince had died that way, I found out he had died that way, I found out uh, Lemmy had died that way, I found David Bowie died that way. So every time I read a name, I'm like, going to stop starting with a name? 
Did they keep going? No, I'm. Gone in, I'd love to see some. I'd love to see something like that pop up, and it says George Clooney is in the Bellagio. I'd <laughs> love to see that. <laughs> I'd be like, somebody needs to alert the security. <laughs> he's just got like a tag on him at all times because he's George Clooney. If you can find, there's a TV series called Huff. Came out in I think it's two thousand four, so Anton would have been fifteen in this. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I came across him, uh, and it's Hank Azaria. Uh, yeah. Oliver Platt is in it, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's a really kind of dark. It's funny. It's it's a kind of dark comedy. All right. Um, only got two series. It was on FX over here. I have no All idea right. who or where would be showing it now, but really worth digging out. Um, What's about? Uh, so Hank is a, a psychiatrist who it basically starts with one of his patients, comedy remember guys, um, who commits suicide in his office. Oh, hilarious. And kind of rolls out from there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's say that's the first place I came across uh, Yelchin. Oh, a yeah. 15 year old kid, and he is awesome. He steals every scene that he's in in that show. And he just. Does he play a thief? He's dark, he's <laughs> funny, he's <laughs> play a <of> thief. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh. that's my recommendation. It's... I'll give it a watch. Is it just one season? Uh, they made two. For some reason, there was a, a year's gap in 2004, they made the same one in 2006, and then didn't get any more after that, yeah. which was a real shame. Well, I'll keep an eye out for that one. Well, anyway, uh, Charlie Reed last, Anton Yelchin, anyway. Um, moving forward, we have... That's interesting. I, just, uh, I was just looking on IMDb to see if there was a... I'm not saying your description of that TV series was terrible, Zen, but I was just trying to see if there was a better was. one. <laughs> And when it came up there, it says people who like this also liked, and there's a film apparently, or a TV series or something called The House of D. Yay. There you go. The description was terrible because if you see anything these days, you just get shouted at by spoilers. Spoiler. <laughs> and to all those that believe in spoilers, go fuck yourself. <laughs> if spoilers were a real thing, there would never be any movies based on books. So again, go fuck yourself. <laughs> go read and fuck yourself. Go read and fuck yourself. <laughs> exactly. Go fuck yourself with a book. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's why my descriptions suck because every time I go to say something, I think I'm just going to get shouted at for getting spoilers, and I should. That's a that's a novel insult. I should just <laughs> go and do it. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I believe that <clears throat> word is anyway. <laughs> Turning the page. Um, <laughs> uh, a couple of bits more of random movie news. We've got. Is anyone? Does anyone care about Bruce Willis anymore? No. Zane. I mean, I take it this is a death wish thing. Yes. Not that Bruce has got a death wish. I mean, that. <laughs> that I mean, that would. Be I used, still I love suppose. Bruce, but I just want him to make a good film again. I mean. Uh, yeah, Bruce Willis in the remake of Death Wish. How's that going to be any different for the, the movies he's been making anyway? It's like, ah, uh -huh. yeah, okay, that could be fun. Uh, yeah, you know. I'll, I'll definitely watch it. It's just the fact that I kind of, right. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it is. He's most kind of recent films. It just, I don't know what it is. I really can't put a finger on what it is. I don't like about when in recent films. I think it's because well, the, the recent Die Hard film. films, four and five Die Hard were terrible. They were terrible, they're okay. Four was rancid. I liked four. Well, you go to hell. <laughs> fuck myself with a book. Go fuck yourself with a book. <laughs> and the other issue is, uh, over the past kind of X amount of years, I've seen that, like quite a few interviews with them and read stories about them, and the guy is a complete asshole by the looks of it. <laughs> so you just watch him. <laughs> there goes one of our fans. And then you, <laughs> and then you go... That guy's an asshole. Rather than there's John McClane, the good guy is going to save the day. No, 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 no. He's an asshole. Mm. I think that's that. I think that's going to be one of these. Th you're always going to get if you're in Hollywood long enough, you just kind of get pissed off with people. I think that seems to be the thing. But 
I don't know what it is. I think my annoyance came from... He did a film called Surrogates with Rada Mitchell, which I actually quite liked. It was all right. And it wasn't far off what you were talking about with the VR headset thing, um, where people just basically get plugged into... What, to the shite? <laughs> no, everybody, yeah. No, everybody's plugged into kind of headsets and they're playing it as their own avatar, but it's a real-world person they're kind of in charge of. So everybody can be kind of like plugged into their other self and be as footless and fancy free as you want. It's basically like a, a surrogate human, as it were. Uh, they can throw themselves off building. They don't die. They just kind of wake up. But something happens with all cheeses. Bit of a weird film. It feels a bit kind of Philip K. Dick style. Um, but I quite enjoyed that. But that seemed to be the start of his kind of cheap films. And he started kind of rolling off. I watched one. I tried to watch one a few months ago called Vice. Which was just fucking terrible. And there's been this kind of random spate of them, you know. So I don't know. It's kind of... I hope this, this could be quite good if they go gritty and dark. It might work if it's kind of like... Did you ever see Kevin Bacon film Death Sentence? No. Good film. Basically starts out where there's a family man and something happens to one member of his family and he goes on a rampage, basically, which is very odd for Kevin Bacon, but it's quite a good, quite well kind of cut together as a film. Um, and I do like a vengeance film. Kind of like, I think it was, around, it was before like Taken came out. So you just kind of man on a mission kind of idea. Uh, but again, if they do Death Wish in this style, I think it might actually work, but I think Bruce Wallace is going to need to buck up his ideas. The only fear I've got with this one is it's Eli Roth, and Eli Roth isn't a great kind of movie maker as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to blame the whole thing on Hudson Hawk. I liked Hudson Hawk because it was shit. <laughs> Are we aware there's another Die Hard movie coming out? Yes, it's set. It's a prequel, I believe. Yeah. I don't know who's cast as him yet. I say we're in the wig. Oh, it's not actually him. Carbon Dallas! <laughs> <laughs> he's got blonde hair and he's living in the future for some weird prequel. Die reason. Hard Year One, apparently. Is it in production? Um, I'm not convinced it is. I think it's only announced. Do we have any cast? Bruce Willis is going to be in it, although they're not saying who he's going to be. Uh, maybe it's, maybe the film doesn't exist. Maybe Bruce Willis is actually done Never's Breakdown, and he's just sitting in his house, like going on IMDb with his pro account. Going, there's a film coming out, and he's just filming on his phone. Uh, so apparently, that, the film is set to take place New Year's Eve, nineteen seventy nine. Wow, we'll do a little dance, right, make yeah. a little love, get killed tonight. So yeah, Die Hard Year One. Basically, it's uh, it's a wee really young Bruce Willis and coming out of the cinema uh, with his parents after seeing Zorro. And they go into a back alley and she gets her pearls ripped off. And I, I mean, John McLean in a cape is just a weird idea, but if that's what they want to do. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? But I don't know. Again, it's weird, but I'll go and see when it comes out. Um, other random nuggets of news we have for movies is. Oh, that's what I wanted you guys to check out, actually, when you get a chance. Uh, the trailer for a new film kind of called The War on Everyone. Um, it's the guy Theo James who's potentially going to be the next James Bond and um, Michael I can't even say Michael Sarah. it's not Michael Sarah. guy the Ant-Man what do you call him again? Paul Rudd? no the Hispanic guy Juan ah, la, 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 la. Rudd? Theo no, no. Theo James is the, the main guy Michael yeah. Peña ah um, so Michael Pena and uh, yeah Theo James. Now this is the guy I showed a picture a couple of weeks ago and says this guy is like too pretty boy to be James Bond. Watch the trailer; it's called The One Everyone, um, and it looks like a good film. It looks like quite good fun, um, but he looks like he actually could pull off like a young Daniel Craig almost. If you watch this this trailer, so give it a wee watch when you can. I've got a mouse point on my face. Ah. Yes, I I yeah, I could go for that. I think. It's, just, it's, it's mannerisms, it's, it's a lot, there's a red band trailer, so look for the red band if you can, because um, that looks pretty, like, kind of worth, worthwhile, because I just think he's, he could fit the role now of seeing him in action, you know, he's not as kind of, oh, look at me, I'm fancy, look at my nice hair, as I thought it was going to be, look at my nice hair. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, give that a watch. Um, so, what sort of rating do you get for a movie where you pull off a young Daniel Craig? That's <laughs> going to be an 18. <laughs> you, need, you, need, you need a particular sexual deviance and you need a deviance? You need a sexual preference and you need a time machine. And Gee, you're good. Just a question. 
<laughs> just to clarify. Um, oh, with that, there's not really a lot going on this week. We also get confirmation that Spy 2 is getting made now. I don't know if anybody watched Spy. It wasn't great, but Jason Statham was hilarious on it. Uh, did you see this one, D? Yeah, I kind of... I, I, I mixed about it. Um, it was better than I thought it was going to be by a long yes, shot. That, that's where I am. Jason Statham made it for me. The, the kind of the funniest line for me is the last thing he says just at the, the very end. So now he's, he's good, just got that, I basically... I've, I've, I've done and I do everything. Yeah. And he kind of ca he caps it perfectly off with the line towards the end. And uh, So it's, it's definitely worth worth a watch, um, 100%. Yeah, so I'll create, I'd, I'd watch another one of those. I think I think in our underrated kind of comedy actors, uh, Rose Byrne as well. She's really good. And Melissa McCarthy, I can uh, is a bit hit and miss for me. Um, other factors, what else have we got? This week? Did any, anybody? I'm going to actually go into Warcraft shortly because I'd like to actually get your input on this scene. But um, I think I'll be a last nugget for the night. But um, did anybody see the interview between Dun uh, Duncan Jones and Adam Rossa? No. no. Oh my god, this guy. I don't even know who he reports for. Adam Ross. Somebody Google eyes it when we're here. But you know that you get these kind of little kind of, um, what do they call them again? Junkets. So you've got like director on this side and you've got like kind of interview on this side and the camera cuts between the two different people. This mm. guy sits down across from Duncan Jones, the director of Warcraft. Duncan Jones being David Bowie's son, I believe. Yes. Um, so Originally, it's Bowie. Bowie. Is that, is that, is, that was his actual name? Mm-hmm. He changed right. it to Duncan Jones. <laughs> Inversion. But, um, yeah, so this guy sits down with Duncan Jones and he starts just kind of wrapping off on him, saying, oh, were you, do you think you were the wrong person to write this film or the wrong person to direct it? And he just keeps slamming him. And God bless Duncan Jones. He sits there and is calm, cool as a cucumber. He's got an answer for everything in the loveliest way. And the guy who's, like, interviewing him at the, end, at the end just stands up halfway through, like, a conversational piece and just walks out. And Duncan Jones sits there and goes, "What?" But he's sort of like Duncan Jones could not have handled it any better. This guy's just an absolute asshole and goes in the attack. Basically, the film's getting panned by critics, but fans are loving it. What are you saying? <laughs> in Studio <laughs> Two? <laughs> did yeah. you, you did watch it, didn't you? So for the uh, for the third week, we're talking about this goddamn movie. Mm. Um, You've actually seen it now, though. So yeah? yeah, I have actually seen it now, which I suppose makes it a bit easier to talk about. Yeah. And I do have to say, I, okay, I mean, first of all, I've got to give that big disclaimer that anybody that's talking about this movie that gives in a positive light is, yes, I played the original game. It wasn't 20 years ago when it came out, but it wasn't that far off it came out. I only ever played Warcraft 2, that's the only one, and I played that to death, that's the only one I yeah. ever played. Well, I started in Warcraft 2 and then I went back. Was that the, the top down one? The original. Yeah, yes. yeah, I played yeah. that as well, yeah. Um, I've been playing World of Warcraft for pretty much six months after it came out on and off um so for the ten and a half years that it's been out i've been in there for about 10 of them mm -hmm. so all that being said yeah absolutely i loved the movie but i also don't understand why it's getting the criticism it's getting uh, like is everybody looking for a bloody magnum opus for one a, a, a conversion of a film i don't know what it is they're looking for i don't get what the, the, the issue with it is. I think there is a mindset of we've not seen a movie like this for a long, long time. And people think... We're we talking like crawl kind of time? Exactly. This is That's exactly where I was going with it. Like Everybody keeps going <laughs> Lord of the Rings um, and that kind of thing, but it's, you know, it's, it's kind of serious and are played kind of seriously. And this is... Not campy then? Yeah, this is played seriously as well. Um, but... It's got that kind of slightly more, again, it's, a story, it's based on a story that was written 20 years ago, and it kind mm -hmm. of reflects that. It reflects, don't think a lot of the rings, think more Krull, think more Red Sonja, think yeah. more Conan, not the Barbarian, the Destroyer, the second one, like the kind of cheesier one. Yeah, yeah. Um, think Red Heat. <laughs> uh, like, it's, it's, it's more that kind of fantasy yeah. It's cheesy. It is cheesy. Mm -hmm. Or at least it is on the, the human side, the orcs. I mean, the, the orcs are just fantastic. The CGI in this is unlike anything you've seen. Wow. Um, and they do a great job of just kicking off the film from the start to go, this is not your Lord of the Rings orcs. This isn't just big, like, um, 
Urukai death dealing machines. These are uh, these are these are creatures with feelings kind of thing. Yeah, so I mean it starts off with this a male and female orc talking about naming their, their unborn son and having a joke about it and being funny and just being Do they joke about calling the child Leroy Jenkins? <laughs> 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 just joking about being and you know they come across as people mm -hmm. and they do a great job of selling it like that yeah there's a kind of real split between the movie which is kind of maybe causes the issue of a lot of folk are complaining that the humans just don't do a good job that it's not well acted and i don't think that's what it is i think it is just kind of slightly more campy mm -hmm. um more theatrical kind of thing yeah they do, I mean, they do do a pretty decent job of it. And it's kind of counterbalanced by when you see the orc side of it. It's not quite, it doesn't balance out because the orcs are kind of over sincere. Mm -hmm. Probably done so, so that the acting comes through the CG. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, just a guess. Yeah. So there is a kind of weird imbalance between the, uh, between the two sides of the movie. And the fact that you don't have just one protagonist kind of causes issues as well so yeah. you're not apparently that boy um he's he's bbc that report really yep <laughs> i was a total asshole nobody I, I saw that saw the interview thought it was had anything good to say i just thought it was an unprofessional twat which is exactly what i took him as as well but if you've not seen it yet get, check out the interview it's just cringe fest does he come across as a gamer who thinks his life's and childhood's been spoiled by the movie yeah i don't think he's I don't think he's a core fan. I don't think he is at all. I think that's probably the problem. I think what it is is a lot of snobbery and kind of film for film critics. Because remember, these are people who were the linchpin of whether a film would succeed or fail. Nowadays, we're all critics and we all got voices, so they're kind of clawing at their own kind of their own existence to some degree. The good ones you respect and you kind of give them good kind of fair judgment, but other ones are just becoming snobs. And there's this real instant backlash against. And I know you hate this term, Zane, but the video game movie, that's, it is, it's an mm -hmm. existent thing, uh, not as a genre, but as a kind of principle, a conversion from one media to another. A lot of critics are just shooting things down by default, saying that's crap. People shot down Prince of Persia. I liked Prince of Persia. I know it was a lot of crap and it was campy fun, but I thought it was a good little action film. So the thing is, these critics are going to jump in the back of it. I think that's what you're talking about, that... The fans loved it, but the critics didn't, and you can't see what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. It's because they're looking for this, this is going to be a film that moves me. Well, no, do you know what? It needs to be entertaining. And yeah. if that's what it does, then it's done its job. I mean, it's, it has its flaws. It absolutely has its flaws. Um, yeah, it, uh, there's all sorts of kind of story plot lines that are muddled um, as to why, again, fucking spoilers. But when you get to the end of the movie, uh, you will like be scratching your head, even as a fa even as a fan knowing the lore. You're just got it's it's not very well explained, mm -hmm. and it's yet another film where this is kind of the the bigger talking point for me is. I think it was Duncan, Jones that came out and said it. Someone came out and said it. Tenuous at best, people. This is what you're going to get. Someone <laughs> you signed do... up for this shit. <laughs> Aye, someone to do with the movie came out and saying there's about 40, 45 minutes of it sitting on the cutting room floor. Um, and it makes a big difference. Like, so, and it's obviously it's the prelude talk to there is going to be a an extended edition, director's cut, ultimate edition, whatever the hell they decide to call this one. Because we couldn't edit it properly first. It's going to come out because they had to shorten it and. St uh, had to shorten it, shorten it, shorten it to put it out in the cinema. Yeah. And this is something we're seeing all the time now. This is something that's just kind of continually coming across. They found a new cash cow, that's why. So, you know, Bats v Superman, it's all, it's, it's an extra 40 minutes going to go in and it'll make the film better. And if you even if you go back to Age of Ultron, you know, as, as soon as that movie came out, you heard Joss Whedon is, is on the, the, the Twitter saying how, and it shows actually, He's on saying how the, the studios made him cut this back and wouldn't let him have certain scenes unless he showed yeah. other scenes. And he had to cut back on what he actually wanted to show, which is why when you watch the movie now, you've got Thor just buggering off in the middle of the movie to go and have a bath in a cave while the professor pal stands yeah. and watches. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, 
Sorry, did you change the film at that point? I don't know. <laughs> no one else saw that. <laughs> that was just you, me. you just turned it over to one of your videos or dudes are watching people go in baths. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's entirely possible that I fell asleep and dreamt I think it's bit, Time but... Team you switched over to. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just what you're getting. getting yeah, no, that's constantly, it. Constantly, uh, cash cow. You get Fantastic Four. They were pretty much saying the same thing as well. Yeah. So my discussion with you off camera which we is going to stop becoming a thing everything is now just going to become save it for the podcast <laughs> but i was saying to you like before is it's absolutely fine if you have these kind of four hour circle jerks on video on demand but you really need to make a movie that works in the cinema in order to get away with it yeah exactly on the other hand i'm actually coming around to a different way of thinking on my own argument I so. of are we now getting to the point where that is what's important is the video on demand side of it is cinema finally starting to lose out as far as it's as far as being a barometer for how well films do i'm not well, saying think, you know I'm not... Film, no there's a lot of films i think you're right there's a lot of films that have succeeded massively in on demand and and, and dvd mm-hmm. And such that didn't do well, like things like Anchorman and things like that did terribly uh, in the cinema, but absolutely killed it in like DVD and uh, Betamax, for example. <laughs> well, I mean that's it. So it's, it's always been a thing. It's been a thing from Christ Highlanders supporting uh, Highlanders at the Edinburgh Film Festival at the moment, celebrating thirty years. The Kurgans up there just now. Oh, cool. Um, Clancy. Clancy Brown. Brown. He's up. He's up there at the moment. Um, celebrating 30 years of Highlander and this is a movie that fucking died in the box oh, office tanked it's a cult classic now though Blade Runner died in the box office did absolutely yeah. fuck all but the duty video duty VHS lived on and are now celebrated that that side of it is nothing new but what I'm wondering is where does are they are they looking at cinema these days in, in the box office numbers in that big weekend is that something that's just is that still relevant should it still be relevant i think that the problem here is that basically what it, what i would say if it wasn't the, if it wasn't for the fact that films are already two and a half hours long and then they're giving you this ultimate cut that's like three and a half hours long I would normally just say, oh, the two and a half hours version is because the shorter version, sorry, is because they're, they're not wanting to keep people in a cinema for three and a half hours. They, they know the attention span of the audience and they don't want to do that. So maybe it's this shorter attention span, fast media world we live in to give you the kind of digest in the cinema and you can get the more in depth version uh, unabridged at home, which is fine. But the films are still two and a half hours long. So to me, I get your point, but I still think I just shit editing and shit writing. Uh, as a fan, if I, I see a film I really enjoy, the idea that I can go and see that film again, but with an extra hour on it and, and explore my, the world that I love so much more is excellent. But mm-hmm. I think I think your original point, I still stand by that more. I think that they should be able to make something. It doesn't need to be as long or it doesn't need to be like super short. It just needs to be more cohesive. And if they think that if they're going to deliberately do this ultimate version, cinema version, make the cinema version or make the ultimate version with a view to we know we have the parts of this we need to strip back to make this still work and write it that way, write it with two versions in mind. Mm-hmm. It feels like they're always writing a seven hour film and then cutting it back and then cutting it back again. So then it becomes like a jumbled mess. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I, th- I think you just do it at the end of the day. I think if your film's two and a half hours long, if your film's three hours long, then that's what you do. That's what you do, yeah. And you put it out. The, the, the problem isn't that people won't sit for three hours to watch a movie. Yeah, that's if, true. If the movie's good, people will sit there for that long. They did it for other Lord of the Rings movies. They've done it for Scorsese's entire career, for fuck's sake. They will sit and watch that movie. The problem, the reason movies are two hours short is because of cinema. Mm. They want to get as many people indoors as possible. They want to put up, they want to have regular times and make it yeah. easy for folk to know. This is a two o'clock show and this is a four o'clock show and this is a 
315 showing. They want to make it easier and they want to get as many folk in the doors. Cinemas do not want to show a three-hour movie because they lose money. Yeah. So it's not down to the audience. It's not because we won't sit on our arses and have no attention span and won't watch a three-hour movie. It's because the cinemas don't want to show it in the first place. And they don't want to, they could, when they could show a film four times where they could fit another film in there nine times. Yeah. So again, yeah. I say, fuck the cinema. <laughs> but you hate the cinema. You hate it. Personally, yes, I hate the cinema. I mean, I, I do. That's have, not the cinema. I, you hate it's the people. <laughs> it's I, mean, humans I, again. I have to say that as well. I, it, it's, it's just not my thing. Like, I get your phone at my face and shove your popcorn up your arse. I, along with your book. <laughs> along with your book. I do not want to know how Shia Chanel is absolutely mortified because she got fingered by wee Johnny at the Beyond Party the other night and everybody <laughs> saw it. That's none of my business. I'm here I to think watch that's your cinema. You go I'm to here to watch people cinemas. get shot on screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's a powerful image there, Zane, I'll tell you. Uh, so what, what cinema is it you go to? <laughs> <laughs> Just so I can uh, avoid it. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, Dee, do you have any thoughts on uh, and the whole kind of, that whole side of things? The whole, what side of things? The whole side of stuff we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we're still talking about World of Warcraft. <laughs> no, we're just talking about kind of cinema in general and how it kind of um, how there's not much kind of there's this kind of ultimate film thing going on, and then you've got like you go and see a three-hour film, then you get a four-hour special edit when you comes out in Blu-ray DVD. And Zane's question was, "Is cinema dead? What do you think? Or is cinema, is cinema going by the wayside? Is it no longer important?" Yes, I mean I said that all about two years ago, I think. Um, kind of the, the signs that cinema is dying off um, were there at the time. Um, I'm seeing nothing to, I'm, I'm not seeing any ingenuity or any new ideas that they're coming up with to, to kind of maintain um, or promote or encourage, I suppose, mm. uh, kind of the younger generation or uh, indeed the existing generations to ditch their 60 inch TVs that they've got strapped to the wall that they can buy for under a thousand pounds um, and not have to put up with assholes in the cinema uh, munching their food other than me and uh, getting their phone out um, because going to the cinema as an experience is annoying as hell. I <laughs> literally can't remember a time. In fact, I can think of one, but that's a pathetic um, example of when I went to the cinema by myself. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's not a fun experience anymore. It used to be because you were seeing these kind of new films on screens that were, were, were kind of that big when you still had a, a kind of whatever, 16-inch flipping CRT in your house. If you were lucky, you had a 22-inch CRT in your house and all that kind of carry on. There's no benefit whatsoever because yeah. you can replicate that environment in your living room in much more comfort and do what the hell you want in your pants or otherwise. There's a th another service coming up then, this will be interesting. You, do you, have you, any of you guys heard of Screening Room? So is this the, the where you pay, I don't know, whatever it is, 50 quid? And 50 dollars, yeah. You get kind of like 10 mates round and in theory it only cost you like five or a head or something. And you watch the newest film that's just hit in the cinema at Cinema Screening Times. J.J. Abrams and Peter, uh, Peter Jackson and all that are back in it as well. It's, it's, it's absolutely the future. It's the brainchild of the dude from Napster, Sean Parker. Um, so it's the idea that J.J. Abrams, Spielberg, who else have we got here, and Peter Jackson are all champion at saying $50 to watch a new movie. Why not? It makes sense. Um, I think that if it becomes a streaming service where it's you pay $50 and that's your monthly and you can watch whatever you want, then it works. I don't think $50 per film would work per se, but um, it's, it sounds like exactly that. It sounds like another death knell for that kind of situation. I do like the kind of, I suppose, the social aspect of that. I mean, because we've had kind of movie nights at your house, for example, where you sit and watch it. I mean, if you think of that and think of like all your mates kind of sitting around and, and actually watching a new film as opposed to an existing film for the most part. That's Zane's nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, people I can tolerate, then and that's fine. I'm not going to say people I like, there's very few of them, but people I can tolerate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can handle that. It's just, uh, no, It's the strangers that do it for me. <laughs> I, just, I, I can, I, sit, I, I can I, sit in the room with other people that I know. I, I do think the, the the kind of the cinema days are numbered. Um, I'm surprised that we're we're seeing still some cinemas actually going up. I think yeah. whoever is behind that from a business perspective is absolutely mental. I don't agree with that. I think the pro I, I know what you're getting at because I, I think I I I think that there's definitely something to it, but. 
there's a social habit of people just going to the cinema. There just is, and mm-hmm. no, a lot of people go to the cinema for put, put it this way: where are people going to go on dates if there's no cinemas? That's <laughs> that's a massive part. Of it. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of things that people just go, oh, we'll go to the cinema. And yeah, I'm the same as you. I, I go because I want to see a new film, but it's been few and far between that I've actually had a great experience. I'm a bit anal about it though, because I get annoyed about like a little rattly speaker or something not right with the projection or something like that. And that's just me, but I, there's, yeah, there's a lot in there that's not quite kind of ideal, I think. Yep, I just, I, I don't see a way forward of, of the cinema su- surviving. I really don't. Well, on that note, I think we should uh, be wrapping ourselves up there, but on, to we'll end on one question. Are you going to go to the cinema this week and what are you going to see? Well, I went, I actually went to go to the cinema this week and this will back up another reason why I <laughs> find the cinema annoying, actually. Um, I went to, I was going to go last night, in fact, to see uh, Nice Guys. Uh-huh. It's already out. Yeah, it binned. So that is, I can't remember, it's maybe four or five times now in the past uh, well, possibly two years where I went to see a film that's only been out a couple of weeks um, and it's already out of the cinema and I'm thinking, what happened to that longevity of a film and having yeah, a, a big long run I mean, there's there's a pile of films I would go and see in the cinema it's just, yeah. it's not been within my kind of, all of us, it's, it's kind of like everything is like absolutely right here, right now mm. and if, if you're not seeing it within two weeks then the chances are you're not going to see it until it's released in another format. They tend to get punched out as well by things like Warcraft and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, big ticket numbers, because that's an indie film by comparison. Uh, like so Shane Black. I mean, I really want to see Nice Guys, and everyone I know that's seen it said it's fantastic. If you like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with Val Kilmer and Robert Downey Jr., it's apparently a carbon copy, but a good one at that. So instead, last night, I sat in and watched Stranger Than Fiction. That's a good wee film, the one with Will Ferrell and Maggie Gyllenhaal. Yes. With, uh, and Emma Thompson. And Emma Thompson, yeah. And um, Queen Latisha. 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 Nope. Weird, weird little film. But it's great. Nice. It's great. Good, good, good Sunday afternoon film, I would say. Nice yeah. wee film. Yeah. Recommended. Yeah. Oh, I'll have a to give it a look. I do need to expand my, my repertoire of film movies. So it's film movies? Film watching? <laughs> Sweet. Oh, <laughs> I can lend you it anyway. It's, it's sitting there anyway, so I can lend you that over. Um... Yeah, on that note, I think that will wrap us up for this week. So I would like to just say, remember, if you want to get in touch with us, you can get us on at 10 at best on Twitter. You can find us on facebook.com forward slash tab podcast. Email us at hello at 10 years at best.com. You need to get used to that one. Uh, you can still get us on Gmail at tab podcast at gmail.com as well, just because. Um, and me personally, you can find my stuff on ratworks.net uh, for motion graphics, t shirts, and all that kind of cool stuff. Zane? I am. Um, just look up Zane Gaming on YouTube. You'll find me there. Playing lots of games and generally just being this lovely charming chap over here. And the guy up there, that's it. There he is. That guy. I never. I am see. everywhere and I am nowhere. That is <laughs> so true. But, uh, on that note, uh, it's been been emotional, um, and we'll see you guys same time next week. So, thanks for tuning in. Take care, folks.